Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the program for today, Collaborate, Meet, and Work Remotely uh, with Google. I'm Trevor Pirard, your presenter today. Hello, everyone. I work here at the Davis County Public Library as the Technical Services uh, Coordinator, so usually you'll see me anytime you need to do anything one-on-one -on -one related, get some help learning how to use a computer, a tablet, a phone, or putting our online resources on your uh, tablet or phone to use. My contact information here is at the bottom left if you need to get a hold of me. Uh, feel free to reach me at any time. We're going to be doing a giveaway with this to $10 gift cards to Amazon. Feel free to leave a message to get entered into a drawing for it and we'll announce the winners at the end. Um, on the right, you'll see some of our upcoming programs for th the end of this week and then into next week. So feel free to look at those as well if they're of an interest to you. Again, throughout, feel free to ask questions, stop me, and I'll answer the moment and move on to the next thing once we get those up. So if you give me one moment to get this up, and we'll begin. Well, give me one second. It seems I'm having a little bit of difficulty with this one. Looks like it's giving me a little bit of technical difficulties, if you don't mind. Give me one second. All right, there we go. So today we're going to talk about collaborating, meeting, and working remotely through Google and how we can do this. So before we begin working remotely and talking about the ways to do it through Google, let's talk about some tips from working from home. Uh, first, you're going to want to keep your routine. It makes it much easier to work if you keep the same routine you normally have or try to with work. And with that, you're going to want to create a dedicated work spot and customize it. So maybe you don't have a home office. So what you're going to want to do is set a desk up or maybe you take the kitchen table or dining room table over. You clear it out from all the stuff you normally have and set it to look like a work desk. And then when you're done with work, it goes back to being the dining table or the kitchen table or wherever. Um, you'll want to schedule lunch and breaks. So that'll help you keep that routine by making sure you have lunch time or break time to give yourself those adequate times to not be working and let your mind decompress. You wanna make sure you have the tools you need. So if there's certain things you need from the office, whether it's paperwork, a device, um, such as a computer or a laptop, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you bring those home or go out and get those supplies and have them readily available at home. Uh, create a daily to-do list the day before so this allows you when you get up the next morning and start to work, you're already set up to start that day and begin working and not have to worry about um, just barely moving along, figuring out what you want to do. It helps you get into that work mindset much easier. And then give your coworkers grace with working from home. It's, you may be dealing with kids, they may be dealing with kids or pets or certain situations coming up. So you're going to want to try and work through them as best possible and they may not respond to you super quickly. If you're not at work, don't work. Try to keep that home life and work life separated. It can be a little bit harder with your working from home, but you might need to do that. If for your own sanity or maybe your family's sanity. <laughs> So this is the agenda for today. First, we're going to talk about Google Meet and Calendar, how to communicate from anywhere. Then we're going to talk about how to collaborate from anywhere with Google Drive. And then we're going to recap and go over some additional training resources. So first, you're going to want to sign into your account. Um, if you don't have a Google account, you can sign up for free. As you can see here in the animation, it's showing you how to 
uh, go through that. If you've ever signed into an account on a computer or a phone, it's pretty much the same as anywhere. Mostly it's usually on the top right. So if your business or employer uses Google Workspace, which is a version of the Google programs, you may have an email address that doesn't look like one. What that means is it may not be at gmail.com. Um, such as us, the library, anytime you'll have, if you try to email one of us or if you look, saw my email at the beginning, it's at dcplibrary.org. We go through a different email system. So they're set up to look like your business, your company. It's to help things make, make things look a little more professional. You'll want to check with your team, maybe your IT, to see if you all are set up through Google or it could even be Hotmail, depending on where you're at. Uh, and the quick tip down at the bottom left, you'll see the where you can go to create an account. Of course, you can also just type in Google email or Google account, and it'll, first link or two will take you there to set one up. So now let's talk about communicating from anywhere, that first item on the agenda. And if you have any questions or if there's any confusion, please speak up, ask, and I'll see what I can do to remedy any confusion for you. So first we're going to talk about Google Meet. It's their tool for video conferencing. Anyone can join a video call and meet, even if they don't have a Google account. Um, however, an account is needed to create a Google Meet. It's very handy to be able to on the spur contact people if you need to, and you're wanting to do kind of a face-to-face, -face, but not in person. So what is Google Meet? Um, it's a transition from in-person meetings to video meetings, whether it be with a client, customer, coworkers, or even friends maybe. You can host meetings with up to 250 participants with a caveat. That is for workspace. For individuals, so just a typical Gmail account you would set up, you can have up to 100 participants. Um, you can record meetings. There are some caveats with that. That's a workspace uh, setting as well. And then all meetings and recordings are encrypted. So the security features are turned on by default. You don't have to worry about that or your meetings being leaked out. And another great thing about Google Meets is it works entirely in your browser. Unlike Zoom and WebEx and some of the others, you don't get that obnoxious pop-up asking you to download the app and install it on your computer and try to run it through it. It simply just works through your browser or through your phone. You don't have to worry about a third-party app to use it. So let's compare the Google Meet versions. We have the free version and the paid plans. The paid plans are what's referring to the Google Workspace, which was formerly known as G Suite. Um, again, 100 participants for a free account, and that's 250 for the paid plans. The maximum durations per meeting is 24 hours. The free, that's just for right now. Um, the asterisk shows the bottom. It's through March 31st of this year for your accounts. Normally, it's an hour for meetings for those free accounts. But on both, the number of meetings you're limited to is unlimited. You can make as many meetings as you want. So you could roll into that hour and then make another meeting and go right back in. And then price per user. So it's Again, free for a free account and for paid plans, the plans start at $6 per user per month. It can change depending on what you want. If you wanna learn more about their pricing, down there in the bottom left corner under our quick tip, we have the workspace.google.com uh, forward slash pricing. You can check in through there and see what details they can, they can give you. So how can your business benefit from Google Meet? It allows you to you know, feel connected when working remotely. It keeps you from just texting back and forth or emailing. It allows you to actually talk to someone else, hear their voice and see them, which helps with any kind of connection. Uh, brainstorming ideas with your team is a lot easier when they're back and forth. It's not a big text or email chain where it's easy to forget something and be very time consuming depending on how quickly people are responding. And then you can schedule remote client consultations. So maybe you can't meet with somebody one day physically because you're in different locations, but you can still at least get in contact with them if you can just find some time where you're both free. And then of course you can also host online classes such as webinars like this one that we do. 
or many of the others that are offered per, for professional training. It's all up to what you want to do with Google Meets. So how to join a video conference? There's two ways that I'm going to go over how to do it, the Google Meet and Google Calendar. Um, at the bottom, you can see the web address for each one that will take you directly to these, the meet.google.com and the calendar.google.com. So option one is to use Google Meet. It's probably the easiest way to do it if you're doing like maybe a spontaneous meeting or just wanting to just suddenly kind of have a casual conversation with some friends or something or coworkers. So what you'll do is you'll want to start a new meeting, as you can see on the left, to create one, or you can join a meeting that's already been set up. If you don't have a Google account, someone will have to give you access, which means they'll have to invite you by either sending you an email with a link or maybe a text message or message through maybe a chat feature for your work through Google Chat to do that. Um, you can't join in on a mobile device, though, if you don't have a Google account that you're signed into. Where you can do it, so just to reiterate, if you're on a computer, if someone sends you that connection, that email, that link, you can log into the meeting. But if you're on mobile, you have to be signed into a Google account to get access to it. And then option two is to use Google Calendar. So this is best if you want to schedule a meeting in advance. So, of course, how do you do it is the question. You'll simply find the day you want for the meeting. You'll double click on it and then add in a title, a day, and a time. And then if you look at the bottom of the screenshot where it says click at Google Meeting Video Conferencing, that allows you to add the actual video conferencing to set it up. And then this screenshot is for Google Workplace, so this may look a little bit differently than you using your own personal one. Um, it allows you the option to join by phone. So that's, again, another one of those little paid options you can get. So, but it's probably less common for people to join by phone and through a phone number. And then you can add more details with more options. So that's the way you would add guests by entering their email through under more options. And then they'll receive an email with a calendar invitation. It'll look somewhat similar to the one in the screenshot you see where it tells you the date, the time, and we'll um, ask if you're going to join and you can mark yes, maybe, or no, depending on the type of event, what it is. Maybe it's you know, a birthday someone sent you and you don't know if you'll be able to go. So that may be something you'll hit maybe. Now, if it's a work meeting, probably going to want to hit yes. Because the important thing with that is whoever creates the meeting gets um, alerts to the way people have answered. So they'll know if you said yes, maybe or no to those meetings. Um, you'll be able to check that through your calendar who's replied yes or no. And then as you can see at the bottom where it says click the link to join the meeting, it gives you that address, that link to click on so you can join it. And of course, you can add these meetings. If you're logged into your Google account, they will go onto your calendar as well so you can check your calendar. And then the host, when they're ready to begin the meeting, will just hit join with Google Meet and it'll start the meeting and everyone else can join in. It's as simple as that. So if there's any questions over those two features of how to join, whether it's through Google Meet or through Google Calendar, uh, please feel free to ask any questions. I'm here to answer them or make anything easier. Or if you would like later to learn more about it or do hands on hands with it, I can always set up an appointment with you to do that. So how's the meeting going to look? That's the next question. Once you start it, what does it look like? So here are two examples of how it's going to look on the computer and how it'll look on your mobile device. Um, as you can see on the computer, it has the join now and the present, depending on which position you're in. If you're 
presenting the uh, meeting or whether you're just joining to partake in it and absorb the information from it. And there are other option joins such as connect to conference room and join and use a phone for audio, depending on, again, how you set it up. And then the mobile is just a very similar pared down, easy to see, not a lot going on, so it's easy to share, join, or mute. So now let's go a little bit over some of the features. So the Google Meet controls. In the top right, you'll see the chat. Um, it's a chat window you can close and open where people can type things in. So maybe they, they've got a lot going on, so they don't want to have their microphone on and they can't speak without a lot of sound coming out of it. So they may be asking questions in the chat or people can post links to different things in the chat. So maybe you're giving a presentation and you're talking about this website you're going to use or this product you're wanting to start selling. You may put links to that website or that object and allow other people to look at it. Or maybe you have some just a stack of information you want to link to a PDF or Word and allow people to read through a document that you're discussing. You can do that. On the bottom uh, where it says microphone on the left, camera on the right, those give you options to change whether you can be heard or can be seen. Um, the way they look now with just open circles, it means the microphone's on and the camera's on. If you were to click on those, it would turn red and put a slash through those. It means your microphone would be off and your camera's off. It's important to make sure you have those the way you want to. Um, you want, might want to make sure your microphone's off if you have a lot of noise or suddenly you're coughing fit. You don't want to interrupt someone else. So it can be important to make sure those are off or on. And then the middle button allows you to in the call if you're the one who's leading it all or if you just join the meeting allows you to just exit and leave the meeting yourself and then sharing your screen can be very important depending on what you do so you may not just be talking but you may be showing a new feature on your website or part of your product and you need to show it on the screen so um, someone can share a file or document by selecting the present now button and it'll allow you to give different options such as presenting your entire screen, a window, or a Chrome tab. Um, an example of this is I'm not using Google Meet for this presentation, but at the beginning you saw me switch between the PowerPoint loading screen I had and the actual presentation. It allows you to do something like that. So you may have multiple items you want to reference and go to and it'll allow you to do that. So maybe you have multiple windows up on your browser that you're going to go through. So it could be that you post a link to the website in chat or a page in chat, and then you go to it yourself so they can be looking at it and following along right beside you as you do it so they know how to navigate through pages. And then recording a meeting. Um, it's in those options down in the bottom right corner where you see those uh, three dots, uh, traffic light. You can actually select that to get some more options. You can record a meeting, and then there's other things such as the full screen. If you need to change a background, if you want to turn on captions, you can do that as well. Now, I will say, going back to it though, um, that is recording meetings something with workspace, so you may not have the option if you're using a free account to do it. So let's talk about some of the best practices with Google Meet. We mentioned a few of these kind of roughly. So you're going to want to make a good impression. Keep your camera on. It usually looks better if you keep your camera on. People know you're paying attention. Um, now there may be times where you need to turn off your camera and you could do that. It's just maybe letting them know ahead of time, hey, I've got to not going to have my camera on because of this or that. Um, choose a neutral background. You don't want a background with a bunch of crazy and wild colors or a lot of stuff going on, especially if you're the presenter, it may distract the people who are in your presentation from being able to really focus in on you if there's a lot going on behind you. So the neutral background may not just be the actual wall, but could be kids running around behind you, a dog doing something in the background or a cat or another family member. Or if you're sitting in front of a window, the people walking back across and forth on the street. 
An external microphone is going to have a better sound quality than one built into your computer. So if you're on a laptop, a Surface, an iPad, they have built-in microphones, but they're not as good of a quality as the external one you would buy and plug into your computer. So that's another way to improve your presentations. And then, like we mentioned earlier, mute your microphone when you're not speaking. I can tell you from personal experiences, I've been mortified when having to talk to someone or someone was talking and didn't realize my mic wasn't muted and then went into a coughing fit. <laughs> you learn pretty quick when you do that once, you, you don't want to do it again. And then solid color, solid color clothing looks best on camera, void stripes and patterns. Just again, it can mess with the camera and what you're seeing helps to not be as distracting so you can get across the actual points you want to. So now let's move on to collaborating from anywhere. I know I talked rather quickly and about a lot in that short little time. So again, feel free to ask any questions about anything we've just gone over and I will clarify what I can on. So collaborate from anywhere. It's always trouble to email a document back and forth to edit between two people may not be super bad if it's not something on a time crunch or you have a deadline coming up soon but if you have a document that three four five six people a whole team are working on that can get really frustrating because you get this long email chain you're renaming a document and then you have to make sure you have the right document and you're not accessing an older one or editing an older one that can cause a lot of chaos and confusion What's easier is storing one in Google Drive that makes it easier. So these are the Google applications. Um, if you're ever using just Google to search, Chrome is your search bar, you'll see the waffle icon, the three by three squares in the top right, and they give you access to all locations, sheets, documents, slides, Google Drive, photos, Chrome, and Gmail. So all these will fit under Google Drive, or you can find them through Google Drive, you can create sheets, documents, and slides through them. So we're going to talk just a little bit about those and how those work. So as you can see from the GIF, this is how you'll access the Google Drive. The drive is the triangular green, yellow, and blue button, but you can also access the other things we had uh, just talked about as well, such as your Gmail or even meet and calendars you can see. And down at the bottom, you'll see that the drive.google.com is the direct address to it. And if you need to learn more about how to upload files to Drive, say you have Word files, PDF files, or a PowerPoint or Excel for Microsoft there you're wanting to upload and switch over, the quick tip at the bottom, the g.co slash drive slash upload, will give you some more information on that. And again, I can always set up a one-on-one -on -one if you also need help with that or would rather have in-person help with that. So Google Drive, what it will allow you to do is access your files from anywhere. If you have a computer you can get onto anywhere, like a laptop, a Surface, an iPad, you can access your documents anywhere, even from your mobile device with an app. Um, you can even do it when you're online. It makes it really helpful to be able to just edit documents. You know, you don't have to worry about having your one computer with you because it's saved on that computer. You could be at a friend's house and be like, oh, hey, I need to go check these uh, documents and make sure that it's refinished or someone made that it's needed to and log on to their computer, check the document and make corrections you need to, okay, anything. And going through day, you don't have to worry about the panic of, oh, I've got to get home, I'm going to get my computer, and then be able to check. It just makes quality of life just a little bit better for those. Um, you can organize your files. As you can see in this screenshot, this is your, your, what your drive will look like, and you can save all kinds of files. The enlarged little icon here in the middle is actually showing a PDF, like a Word type document, there's sheets, and then what would be a PowerPoint. So it'll allow you to set all those. You can even do folders as well and put everything into different folders, make it nice and organized as much as you want to or as little as you want to. It all depends on you. You can rename the documents. You can, 
if you look up here, you can see who the owner of the document is and when it was last modified as well. So you can control who sees a file. You can share access to different files or different groups or individuals. Um, so there's different levels of it. So on the screen, it's giving two examples of the agenda and the budget who you can share with. And at the bottom, it shows the screen it looks like when you go to share. You'll simply type in the person's email address. And if you see over here to the right, it allows you to change the type of access they have. So someone could have be a full on editor of a document. They can edit it and make comments. Uh, someone can just make comments. So maybe you want their input, but you don't want them actually editing the document. They can do that. Or you can set it to people can just look at the document. They can't make edits. They can't make comments. And it's just for reading purposes. So you may have those different axes, especially if it's a training document for work. You may have managers working on this document, your direct staff, or like an assistant manager looking at it, giving comments, and then just the regular staff getting access to look at it and read it. So now let's talk about how to create a document in a Google Drive. If you look at the screenshot, it's kind of showing you briefly how you can go over and do that. You'll simply create a new blank document or one from a template by clicking on new and then selecting the type of file you want, which could be a Google Documents, Sheets, or Slides. Google Documents is the same as Microsoft Words. Uh, Sheets is the same as Excel. And then Slides, of course, is their version of PowerPoint. So maybe you want to use a template, maybe you don't. That all depends on the type of format you're going for if you want to create your own. Uh, down on the bottom left, if you're wanting just a direct link to documents, it'd be docs.google.com. Quick ways to get access to it or to save it as a uh, bookmark to quickly access it instead of going through all the different little steps with clicking. So the first thing you're going to do when you create any of your documents, whether it be the doc, the slide, or the sheet, you're going to want to rename your document. Um, Google automatically saves your documents, so you don't ever have to worry about typing for several hours, not saving it, your computer crashing, and you losing hours worth of work. The moment you stop typing, it goes to save the document. You're going to want to rename it because you don't want to end up with a whole bunch of documents that are called untitled document, and you have to go sifting through all those to find the correct one you're looking for. So we mentioned earlier about being able to make comments and being able to share. Here's how you can do those. In the top right, you can see in the share bubble, that's the share button you'll click on. It'll give you that screen to put in the emails and the access level you want to give people. And then the, what looks like a square speech bubble with the plus is how you add a comment on something. So if you look at the screenshot where they've highlighted how we started looking for a replacement, what you'll do is highlight something, hit the add comment, and it'll allow you to write a comment. And what you can do is you can enter plus and then a person's email, and it'll send them an email as telling them you're wanting feedback you're on your comment. So this can be very handy for getting, if you're needing multiple, you're posting multiple comments and needing multiple responses from multiple people, can help make that a little bit easier for them to find where they need to go. So in expounding on that a little more, you can assign tasks for comments. So in this example, you can see where John is tagged for completing an email communication. And they're just telling Randy to please make sure John has the login info he needs. It's just telling them information and showing them where to go to get it or what they need to do. And then he can check off on that. As you can see, um, you can assign it to someone and the, the assigned person will be notified and responsible for marking as done. So they'll assign it and then they have to mark it done. And then this is another example in slides where the person simply asking how does the title sound and just wanting some feedback if it makes sense to them. So the great thing about comments is it allows you to ask questions or leave notes without having to worry about a long email chain of someone going into the document, opening it, reading it, and going back and forth. They can just do it right there live, and it's easier to access 
because you'll see the changes. Even if you're in the document, you'll see those changes made live while they're doing them. So here's a few uh, tips and tricks so you can download other file formats. So maybe you need to send this file to someone else, maybe a customer that doesn't use Google, they just use Microsoft. So you can actually download your files as like Word documents, uh, PDFs, or just like plain text, or again, as a Excel spreadsheet or PowerPoint slides. You can download them as those versions to send to that person. The same way you can upload those to Google for you to access and it will convert them, which makes it easy to take those files and transfer them over without having to do a whole lot of work, do spending a whole lot of effort on trying to do it and making sure it works out right. So let's talk about accessing files online, which is another important thing. So maybe you live out in the country and you're not going to have access to your files normally, or you just have really crappy internet. If you're at work, you can make it available offline and then still access it at home. The one caveat with that is you have to make it available online on the device you're using. So if you're on your phone, you just make it offline, you take it with you, you're good. But if you have a laptop at home that you would be using for work-related things or whatever else you're going to use for Google, use Google Drive for, you would have to make it available offline in a place where you have it. So maybe you're at the local coffee shop, you're sending McDonald's or your work, you want to make it available offline. The way you'll do that is by clicking on file in the top left. And then about halfway down, you'll see where it says make available offline. And you'll simply click it. So that covers the second part on our agenda for Google Drive. I know that was pretty dense on information and I didn't go a lot over documents, sheets, or slides. Um, I've gone over those in a previous program we've done and if you ever want to learn more about that, I'm more than willing to set up an appointment to do that or if you have any questions about what we just went over, feel free to ask and I'll answer them. So let's talk about the next steps in a recap. So you want to learn to communicate with online tools, collaborate on files with groups and individuals, and get the additional training you need. So the meet.google and the drive.google are the first two we've talked about in the first and second part of the agenda. The third part is the grow.google with the additional training that we're about to discuss. So there's other apps for you to explore, uh, forms, which allows you to create surveys. So maybe you need to send out to your staff, you're trying to get some information back on where a project needs to go or what project everyone else thinks would be more important to work on or whatever else you could use it for. Sites allows you to create a free website, work portfolios, photos to keep all your photos organized and easy to find so you're not saving them all on your phone. It's easier to have them up there and upload it to a cloud system. Uh, YouTube to let you record videos for your company and then Play allows you access to the Google Play Store for any of the apps you need or want. So let's talk about the business and marketing lessons uh, that you can find through Google's app called Primer. Uh, you can access it at g.co slash Primer or you can even go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and type in Primer and you'll find it. Um, it has quick, easy business lessons on your phone. Whenever you have a few free minutes, you can do them. The lessons are less than five minutes a piece, and they give you practical, personalized next steps to help maybe get a little bit more busy at business acumen. So maybe how to organize your time or how to communicate. If you're wanting to do a little bit of that training, they have access to it. Um, have quick help videos for small businesses it allows you to watch short videos to learn how to use Google's tools, find answers to you know the frequently asked questions that people have for them, and then you can learn about new features. Uh, the quick tips down there in the bottom, the g.co slash grow slash quick help to watch on YouTube if you want to learn more about that. 
You'll also learn things like how to get your business listed on Google, how to create a YouTube channel for your business, and how to start a Google Meet conference, which we just went over, but could be a good way to refresh. So they have free online training for people that's just available to the public at uh, google.com slash grow. They have it for teachers and students. So for them to be able to have these items available in their classroom to help teach um, special things that will be helpful for them later on in life, such as like communication and organization, uh, local businesses, it helps them set up their accounts and look at analytics to figure out how's the best to marketing and to do ads for job seekers to create resumes and to possibly look at new certifications and how to do a little bit better at job searching online. And then for developers, they have classes on learning how to do coding. So if you're wanting to get into coding or do more coding, you have access to that. And it shows here at the bottom where they have access through. Coursera is one of those that would help for learning code. Uh, so out of everything I've talked about today, these are the resources, uh, the page that we have that will give you a quick idea of where all the web addresses directly go to if you're not wanting to have to go search around for them or click on the waffle icon and scroll through if you just want to set up a bunch of shortcuts to them you can do it with these web addresses uh thank you for attending today and again if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me i can always help through my email it's tprard P I E R R A R D at dcplibrary.org, or you can call my uh, phone number at my desk, 270-684-0211, extension 247. If I'm there, I'll answer it, talk to you, set something up. And if not, just leave a voice message and I'll get back to you as short as I, as quick as I can. And again, if you have any questions now, feel free to ask and I'll clarify any confusion there may be. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Thanks and